Hey everybody, it's the Reverend from Cooking with the Reverend and the Bearded Brewers. Here to bring you a quick grilling tip and a tasty little treat that you can make yourself on a hot day. When you're making anything on the grill, there's a few things that you need to consider. One, what kind of grill you're using. Two, what you're going to be cooking. And three, how do you want it cooked? Now, when I say how do you want it cooked, you have to take into consideration rare, medium rare, medium, medium well, well done, thanks to that degree. Now, there is such thing as overcooking and undercooking. Got to get it right in the sweet spot. When you're cooking on the grill, first thing to remember, if you're using charcoal, it's going to take at least 15 minutes for your coals to get to the right temperature. My recommendation is get a chimney starter. That way you can put all your charcoal in one slot, fire it up, and let it burn uniformly. If you happen to not have one of those, you could very easily just put it inside of your grill in a pyramid, if you will, light it accordingly, and let it go. If you're using a propane grill, you have a little bit easier. You just start it and let it go. If you're using charcoal, again, give yourself at least 15 minutes to let the lighter fluid flavor run out. Because we all know you're going to use lighter fluid. Once you've got your coals going or you've started your propane grill, the next step, no matter which one you use, is temperature. It's key. You've got to make sure that that grill is the right temp. Otherwise, you're going to end up in the situation where you're cooking it longer than you should, causing your meat to dry out or you're going to cook it too fast and it might cook uneven. If, especially if you're cooking multiple things, you'll have one that's charred and the other that came out just right. So make sure that you've got your grill in the right spot. Recommended you want it to be about 350 and above. Now the 350 mark is going to be based off of if you're doing a, a direct grill and if you're doing direct grilling uh, as opposed to indirect grilling that means where the heat's on the side and you're just you know using the residual heat to cook that's the difference the reason why is you want to get those grates nice and hot that way when you put that meat on there you hear that sizzle and that sizzle is what we're all after plus it gives you those trademark grill marks that everybody loves now to leave you with a quick and easy recipe get yourself some mild Italian sausage and some sweet Italian sausage Put those bad mamma jammas on the grill, grill those up, but you want to do that towards the end of this process actually. And you also want to get some cucumbers, slice and dice those, some tomatoes, make some wedges, some red onions, slice those nice and thin, get some olive oil, some red vinaigrette, some garlic, some salt, some oregano or oregano, however you want to say it. Mix it all together, make yourself a nice light Greek salad. Get some feta cheese, crumble that. Once you've cooked your sausage, slice them up. Put them on the plate, on top of the salad or next to it, and there you go. You've got something light and refreshing and some protein to help make sure you stay full. Anyway, this has been a Reverend Quickie. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, keep drinking great beer. And by the way, today I'm drinking Terrapin Hopsecutioner, which pairs very well with the meal I just talked about. Six different types of hops. And even though they're not part of that craft beer independent movement, remember, craft beer can still be made by the big boys. They're owned by Miller Coors. They didn't sell out. They bought in. They got their beer to the masses. Cheers, everybody. Thanks again for watching.